Pare-pareho po kaming binigyan ng oras. Nagpipray ako na makuha natin ito lahat. Kasi since last year, napakaraming mga nangyari. Pero dapat ma-review tayo ano bang mga nangyari sa mga nakaraang taon. Napakabilis ng mga pangyayari. Uh, itong three years na ito ay time of preparation. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, time of preparation. Scientists are baffled with uh, what's happening in the world. Solar flares will be something ordinary that you're going to see these days. Solar flares are explosion on the surface of the sun. And the future is this. It is going to affect the electromagnetic waves of the earth and it's going to affect the weather system. Every time that there is a solar flare, they're seeing a relationship with earthquakes and the tilting of the earth. Tumatagilid po ang earth. At sa pagtagilid ng earth, uh, yun pong mga dating hindi na-expose sa sun, na-expose sa sun. So, ibig sabihin, yung North Pole na maraming ice, nalulusaw po. Maaring isang araw, baka ang Pilipinas nandun na sa side ng Amerika. So, itago ninyo yung mga makakapal yung gamit kasi magkakaroon tayo ng winter. Amerika naman na magtatanim ng mangga. Pero maraming effect kasi oras na magmelt ang North Pole, tumataas ang water system around the world. Ang ibig sabihin nito, malulubog ang mga seashores. Lulubog po, may mga islands na hindi na makikita. In fact, uh, sa Pacific, ang Nauru ay uh, nag-aas kung pwede na silang lumipat sa another country kasi mawawala na yung, yung, ano, yung island of Nauru. So these are the things that are going to happen in the future and we want us to be prepared. Part of the preparation will be what we've been hearing. We need to pray. But I want to give you some good news muna. Where are we in what Bishop Dan was saying about the 490 years, di ba? Yung 490 years will be the day of restoration. Lahat po nung mga nakitang vision ni Bishop Dan habang pinag-aaralan namin yung, ano, yung uh, tinatawag na spiritual landscape ng Pilipinas, nakikita namin na parang, ano, parang pinagtagni-tagni, dikit-dikit. Hindi mo pwedeng mahiwalay ito. With what uh, the Reverend Miss is saying and with what uh, Chuck Pierce was saying, we realized that they are coming together. They are coming together. So what happened in the 490 years? Let's review. Can we have that uh, review of the... The Philippines is in the stage of recovery and restoration, going to surplus. Sige, palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. We will have to do this very fast. Sige, next slide. The Philippines, according to the International Monetary Fund, the Philippines has been classified from a Bauer nation to a lender nation. Next slide, please. Okay, flip na lang, no? The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 says that you will be able to make loans to many nations but won't need to borrow from any. Because of the 490 years, we're seeing this result. Next slide, please. The Lord is reversing our plight and captivity and ill fortune. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 3 says, The Lord your God will reverse your captivity. God is reversing this captivity. God is saying, I'm going to rescue you from your plight. God is saying that I will reverse your plight. And I'm going to make sure that the ill fortune is going to be reversed. Next slide, please. The Philippines led over $125 million in the ailing economies of Europe to the International Monetary Fund. It means this, for the past 45 years, tayo pong nangungutang, but this year, tayo po ang nagpapautang. Next slide, please. The Philippines joined a pooled funds where countries with strong external position lent to the borrowing members. Ang ibig sabihin nito, since 19, 2010, okay, ay nabayaran na po natin yung utang natin sa IM World Bank. 
Meron tayong natitirang utang, pero bridge financing na lang yon. Pwedeng bayaran immediately, pero bakit mo babayaran immediately? Pwede namang hiramin pa, okay, na hindi tayo mababurden. Kaya ibig sabihin, hindi po problema ang utang. Kaya nating magbayad ng utang natin. Next slide, please. This year, the Banco Central reported on February 22 that the Philippines infused 200, about 250 million dollars, okay, to the funds of IMF to be able to help Ireland, Portugal, and Greece in an effort to address the financial crisis in the European nations. Next slide, please. God is intervening to restore, for the Lord our God is going to intervene and is going to, pros to prosper us. Ito pong sinasabi ng salita ng Diyos. We need to hold on this. Amen? We need to hold on this. Next slide, please. We have joined the international cooperation efforts to mitigate the spillover effects of Europe's sovereign debt crisis. In other words, while the other nations are having problem with their finances, the Philippines doesn't have that problem anymore. We are actually liquid. We are able to fund okay, every debt that we have today. God is bringing our ruins and wounds to health and healing. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, we are going into health and healing this time. Let's go to the next slide, please. Look at this. The balance of payment for the past seven years has always been positive. This year, we have almost one trillion excess funds. Next slide, please. The country has a gross international reserve of almost 80 billion, the same as the gross international reserve of Israel. Next slide, please. The Banco Central is saying this, that because of the remittances and because of the BPO, yung po mga call centers natin, do you know that our call centers, including the remittances from the, from the OWs, is worth about $20 billion. Napakalaki po nito. Wala pong bansang merong ganitong situation. Pilipinas lang to. Ang maganda dito, sige, palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Let's go to the next slide. I'll explain more of this. In fact, because of the liquidity that we have, IMF as the Philippines, aside from Europe, pwede bang mag-contribute ka rin sa ASEAN so that pag nagkaroon ng problema ang Japan, Korea, at Hong Kong, pwedeng mangutang. So therefore, ang Pilipinas ay mag-contribute ng about $5 billion this year para pwedeng kuhanan ng pera ng ibang bansa para sa Asia. Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Next slide, please. Who is having the last laugh now? Si Secretary Jesus Stanislaw before, ito yung uh, DDP chairman during the time of Cory, okay? One time, went to a conference. Ito sa conference, nakaupo sila, and then, merong isang uh, ano, uh, Saudi Arabian prince, may nakalagay sa kanyang, ta yung kanyang uh, marker, yung tag niya, sabi niya, Ministry of Snow. 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 Tapos tingin sa kanya, Ministry of Finance. Ang sabi, sa, ang sabi niya, why do you have a Ministry of Snow? You don't have snow in Saudi Arabia. Tapos tinginan niyo yung pangalan niya, you're from the Philippines, yes. Ministry of Finance in the Philippines. Why do you have a finance minister when you don't have money in the Philippines? We became the laughing bat of the nations 45 years ago. Pagtatawanan tayo. Wala tayong pera. Napakabuti ng Panginoon kasi... Babuk paman ng nyari mga bagay na ito at may pinlano na siya. Now, we have about 80 billion, okay? We have about 500 million dollars na ibinibigay natin sa IMF. Sinasabi niya natin sa kanila, pwede ninyong pahiram sa mga bansang naghihirap ngayon. Next slide, please. Tipping point, Bernardo Villegas, the economist, says this, there is this tipping point, the point in which a series of small changes or incidents become significant enough to cause a larger, more important change. Anong tipping point? Pag yung baso, nilagyan mo ng tubig at malapit na siyang mapuno, lagyan mo ng patak-patak-patak lang yan, di ba? May isang, one, one of these points, bigla na lang mahuhulog niya yung tubig, di ba? Ito tinatawag na tipping point. Okay? The start of the lunar new year of January 23, 2012, the Philippines, they say, will emerge in 2050 as the 16th largest economy of the world. We have nothing to do with this. It's just a favor from the Lord. Let's go to the next slide. Many eyebrows were raised because exactly a year ago, similar forecast was made by the same bank, HSBC, but they did not include the Philippines among the top countries. But when they evaluated again, next slide, please. Okay. 
the Philippines is now counted as part of the 50 nations that will rise up in 50 years. Of course, alam natin, hindi na ng 50 years ang Pilipinas. Okay? Dadating na ang Panginoon. Palagay ko, i-ano, i- i-advance ng God dyan. Anyway, let's go to the next slide, please. What I'm saying is this. Hindi po imposible sa Diyos pagka naka-align ka doon sa purposes niya. Tama ba? Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Next slide, please. Let's go, let's go. Up, up. Bilisan natin to. Wells Fargo says the BP operations is a boat of confidence in the Philippines. Next slide. Wells Fargo is the fourth largest bank in the United States in terms of assets and the largest bank in terms of market capitalization. This is from the United States. Look at what's happening here. Next slide. Okay. At present, they employ 180 people and they are thinking of increasing it to 450 to 500 seats. Call center sila. Okay? But do you know that in the coming years, they are expecting, next slide please, they expect that they will be able to employ 120,000 BPOs. Ito po, call centers, operators to, 120,000. This is unprecedented. Even in India, hindi nangyari ito. Okay? At present, the BPO industry employs about 450,000. Okay? Mostly in the call center facilities, making it the world's leader in this sector. This year, we are ahead of Bangalore. Mas mataas ng number ng BPO natin. Tayong kinukonsidered the highest number of call center agents in the world today, mga Pilipino. E eh, paano namang hindi mangyayari yan? Eh, mga Pilipino, magaling talagang magsalita. No? Pag pumunta kayo ng mga call center, pagtakpan niyo mata ninyo, huwag ninyong titingnan, parang nasa Europe kayo. Okay, next. Let's go. Ano sabi dito? Sa, no, wait, balik tayo sa slide na yan. Ano sabi dito? Sabi dito, magaling ang Pilipino. Sabi niya, we're here because we believe in the skills of the Filipino BPO workers. They're coming. More are coming. Amen? I'm putting this in perspective because there are many things that we're going to face. There will be calamities, but there will be problems too. We will have to address both of them. We will have to pray. Amen? Let's go to the next slide. The Lord says, I will remove the shame that Satan has tried to put upon this nation. This was the word of Cindy Jacobs in 2002. I want to get... Let's go to the next slide. Leia Salonga was portrayed as a prostitute in Miss Saigon. Magaling si Leia, di ba? Kaya lang, prostitute. I want you to go to the next slide. Manny Pacquiao removed the Filipino shame. Ibigay natin ng papuri sa Panganon. Next slide, please. Manny Pacquiao, I believe, is a sign of restoration. He is now considered by the Catholics the Bible ambassador. He said this, The old Manny Pacquiao is dead and the new one has come. These are the very words of this boxing champ himself found, quoted, featured in the main official website. Let's go to the next slide. Pacquiao boldly shares what he has learned to the Bible and he shares to everyone who comes to him about the, about the scripture. We were in ABS-CBN and Manny Pacquiao was talking to so many artists and they want to get near. Yung pong mga priests at mga bishops, they want to get near. Hindi ko alam kung bag magpapapirma no? or what. Pero what we see is this. The Bible encourages us, sabi niya, the Bible encourages us to read God's word in order for us to know the truth. And then, you see, the bishops and the priests now are attending the recollection where Manny Pacquiao is the main speaker. Let's go to the next slide. The attendees were even more impressed when the world boxing champ acknowledged his sinfulness and depravity as a Catholic and how, though he has been saved in which he was not, Pacquiao mentioned that it is a life which has now turned back to the face of a new life. He is a born-again Christian in Jesus Christ. Next slide, please. In fact, the Catholic Church wants to ask Manny Pacquiao to become the Bible ambassador equivalent to the MFL quarterback, Tim Tebow. He has done his fate in the United States. Let's turn to the next slide, please. Isang bagay na na-discover ko ito. Meron pong isang Pilipina na taga Dabao na nag-graduate ng Ateneo de Dabao, okay, nakapangasawa ng isang Koreano, ngayon po ay member na ng Parliament ng Korea. Nakakatakot ito, baka ang next president ng Korea, Pilipino. Anyway, 
Let's go to the next slide. <laughs> okay. Those are good news. Are you blessed? Let's all stand. Let's all stand. I want you to thank God. Three by threes, just thank God. Amen? Just thank God. God is good. Amen? Come on, come on. Three by threes. Come on. Let's give the offering to the Lord. Our praises. Thank God today. Thank God. We're in the Jubilee period. He is good. And His mercies endures forever. God is a good God. Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. You may have your seat, please. Let's go to the next set of slides. Are you blessed? Sabi mo sa katibig mo, bless ako. Next slide. The, uh, yung isa. The other set, please. The Philippines was spared. Hallelujah. Sige, palapakan natin ang Panginoon. Sabi mo sa katabi, ang galing lang, Lord. God lang ang pwedeng gumawa nito. Only God can do this. Amen? Next slide, please. Bakit hallelujah? Last Tuesday, it, it was said that North Korea will send their rocket in space. Okay? And the Philippines declared, okay, yung uh, South China Sea, Pacific, Mula Cagayan hanggang Pulilio Island sa Quezon, okay? As a no-fly zone, okay? Airlines and private aircrafts were not allowed to pass through that 119 nautical miles northeast of Santa Ana, Cagayan Province. And the 140 nautical miles east of Pulilio Island, Quezon Province, where the rocket is expected to land. Do you, do you, have, the, do you have the map? Pinakuha ko itong map. Ito po yung launching it, uh, satellite picture to. Yan po yung launching pad nung, ano, nung rocket. Next slide, please. Pero alam ninyo, this morning, it failed. Amen ba? Alam nyo, nakakatako to kasi pagka bumagsak yung debris, Hindi mo alam kung saan kaya i-evacuate lahat yung sa Cagayan. Paano mo i-evacuate lahat 'yan? Eh mga Pilipino, talagang risk taker 'yan. Hindi mangyayari 'yan. Ganyan ang mga Pilipino eh. Hindi ba galon? Kaya nga maraming namamatay kasi ayun nila maniwala pa sa yung bulkan. Anyway. Okay. No no element of the rocket reached the space. Wala po. Okay? Wala talaga. Okay? Tumataas pa lang bumagsak na. Grabe ba? Alam niyo, nakakatakot talagang mag-work against the, the work of God in the Philippines. Amen ba? Now, I'm, I'm, giving you, I'm giving you this strength because we need to pray today. Later on, ito lahat good news. Mamaya, yung bad news in a sense. Hindi naman bad news talaga. But we need, we need to know how to balance these things. Okay, next slide please. This is the Kuang Myung Song uh, Rocket. Yung po yung Kuang Myung Song Rocket. Next slide. That's how it looks like. Okay, yun yung, yung rocket head niya. Okay? That's how big it is. It's about $800 million. Sa isang lugar, nagutom ang mga tao, nag-spend sila ng ganyan. Bakit? Kasi gusto lang magpaladala ng isang satellite. Actually, pang-weather daw, eh pwede naman silang mag-ask ng another satellite. Pero actually,